All right, welcome back. And uh, here we go with News Hub uh, discussion number one. We're going to be looking at um, the university systems. It's a question we're asking whether lic licensing of more universities uh, is what we should be doing or not be doing. And we have a, a great array of uh, resource persons to talk with us this morning. In Lagos, we have Dr. Peter Ogudor. It's a pleasure to have you join us this fine morning. It's my pleasure too, to He's be here. He's an educationist and international education consultant. And I've known him for many years, and um, he does this so well. Uh, uh, in Abuja, rather, uh, uh, join us via Zoom. I, I don't know what, where uh, our guest is, but Okunaboy in Kotaria um, joins the conversation. Okunaboy in Kotaria is a public affairs analyst, uh, criminal justice, and uh, criminal. Uh, a criminology consultant. But I'm not sure for this <laughs> you'll wear that cap, but always a pleasure speaking with you, Kunabo and Kotaria. Uh -huh, I don't know if that's true, but good morning. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 Mr. Kotaria, will you please help us uh, reduce the, the volume of your TV so we don't get the, uh, the feedback? All right. While we get uh, uh, Oponobo and Kutara back in the business, let's start with the business here. Uh, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, fantastic and always great to have you talk with us on education, and this time with the university system. And you can compare and contrast with the number of years you've been outside the country to you know, look at the educational systems from the Scandinavia, Europe, um, the Americas, and then you know, look at what we're doing here in Nigeria. Every lawmaker, every time I turn on the TV and I'm watching plenary, seems to want to have a university <laughs> in his local government or a polytechnic or a college of education. But then when I think about the numbers of people who also write jam and don't get into those universities, I think also too that uh, maybe we don't have enough universities in the country too, or uh, maybe the capacity to expand them hasn't happened. But what are your thoughts about the country's university system uh, do, you need, do we need more, or do you think that uh, what we have is adequate? Well, um, it, it's obvious that we are not giving adequate access to young people to benefit from higher education. The question we have to ask is, the way to give them better access, is it to build more universities, or to fund and maintain what we have in place at the moment? The latter seems to be the right answer. We don't need more universities. Uh, interestingly, um, I'm the world's number one expert on this one because that's what I did my PhD on in England and, and in the Scandinavia. Mm. I, I hear people who run National Universities Commission, JAMB and all of that, trying to give the impression that we need more universities. We, ha we don't have evidence that supports that because we have much more than we need in terms of space, really. Uh, what the average Nigerian, including the people who run the system, is mm. not conscious of is the fact that we have spaces that the average Nigerian child who wants to go to university is not aware he can utilize. Take the case of University of Ibadan. Ibadan has minimum nine other, inst 11 other institutions that are affiliated to it mm. that are not in Ibadan. About two or three are in Lagos. And some are in the east, some are in Ibadan, but outside of the University of Ibadan, mm -hmm. okay? Seminary schools, etc. Now, you, you go to the University of Nigeria and Soka, there is Digital Bridge Institute. It's a federal government institution mm -hmm. that is, has been set up and is funded with federal government money to produce the best brains in the area of computer science, filmmaking, etc. Nobody, the average Nigerian child does not know that those places are in existence. And they are world bachelor's degrees. Mm. And if you finish from those places, you can move on to and get your master's and get your PhD. Mm. You, for those of you in the mass communication industry, for example, mm. you, don't read, you don't need a regular university to get a degree in mass comm anymore. Mm. NTA has an institute that... Yeah, is affiliated to a university, meaning that you can study there for a number of years and you get a degree. And you find that with several, virtually every university in Nigeria has colleges of education that are affiliated to it, that are awarding degrees, and those degrees do, do not discriminate in terms of where you got them. Mm. When you finish, you just get University of Ibadan awarded degree. It's, there's no difference between the person who studied at Ibadan, the city, and the person who studied in Lagos. Both of them end up with the same degree. These places are lying fallow. 
What we lack is a career management system, which unfortunately we don't teach in Nigeria. I haven't seen one university in this country that is offering career management service. Mm. And so in the absence of a career management service, it becomes difficult for Nigerian young people to understand that they don't need the regular conventional things to be able to get what they want. Mm. And until we are able to create that system and put it in place and maintain it, we will continue to believe that we need more universities. But more critically, the universities we are licensing are just places that we have created to create to compound the problem of the higher education system. The average private university in this country mm. is struggling to attract students to enroll. And nine out of every ten of them are just glorified secondary schools. They do not deserve to bear the name of university. And parents are wasting their money sending children to those kinds of places. They don't have the infrastructure. They haven't got the manpower. The few people who teach in these places are lecturers who retain their permanent appointment in federal schools and state universities. Right. And they go there as adjunct lecturers. They haven't got their own manpower. And so we are wasting children's time because these children finish in these places. I train them. Those who finish in those kinds of places, they come for some of the programs I run. And when you listen to them, you wonder, why did their parents send you to a private university? Hmm. You would have been better off even in a state university. And that's what we find. Regularly, when they compete with those who attended the so-called public universities that we, we malign, we, we criticize, we discover that these ones at, at shine them. Mm. But why do we continue to believe that private universities are doing better? It's because most of our decisions and, our, and ideas and beliefs are not founded on evidence. And that's very unfortunate for us. We need mm. to do more research mm. and learn to advise government and the people who run this system using facts and figures. The mm. facts and figures we have today say very clearly that mm. building, licensing more universities is the way to create more problems for the system. And licensing more universities is also the way to make life difficult even for the people who get those licenses because many of them have erroneously believed mm. that university is, is, can be run like a business. And they discover when they go into it mm. that they are just going to lose money. And that's what is happening currently. Mm. I mean, doctor, it's, um, I mean, Nigeria somewhat is polarized when it comes to this issue because a mm. lot of people are also thinking, can we democratize um, higher education and um, university education in the sense that I am not from a particular state, therefore I am not put you know, at advantage position you know, to get into school. That's one point. Two, I'm, I'm glad you did your research on, on your PhD or research or thesis on this particular issue. What are some of the um, faults that you have seen um, that is making our universities not churn out the graduates that will be um, competitive in the global scale? You can't you can turn out graduates that can be globally competitive if you don't have the technology to train them. The average Nigerian electrical engineer who came out of the average university in this country is, all other factors being equal, a very intelligent person. But he cannot deliver when you put him in a global context. Not because he doesn't want to, not because he's not intelligent, but because we have not trained him in an environment and with technology that enables him to understand what the world is talking about today. Those who study computer science, they, I run into them you know, regularly. And we should be careful because sometimes what happens is that the reason why we relax is because we run into um, outliers. So out of 100 students who come out of university with a degree in computer science from University of Lagos, you can find two of them who go out to America and they are shine Americans and so we conclude but that guy he studied at University of uh, Lagos he too is doing well abroad that's two uh, or one out of hundred that's not how society is run you need to get 100 out of 100 shining that's the only way you can make it as a country at the moment that is not what we find because even the people who teach them don't even understand where the world is this these are some of them are my colleagues I run into them at, at conferences when I go abroad so, you know some of them come and they are happy to come because a lot of this, the things they hear when they meet us at international conferences, especially those of us who have been functioning abroad for quite some time, I think those things come across to them as very strange. Mm. And they confess to us that it's exactly it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not their fault. And they agree. Mm. Because I do research in this place. I also teach in universities in, in Nigeria and polytechnics. I teach them employability. And a lot of the times when I go to these places, most of the things I talk about, it's like this man is coming from the moon. You know, they are hearing <laughs> those things for the first time. And these are things... You know, most of the time I'm talking to final year students in these universities 
And you are talking about things they, they should have taught them when they were in year one. And they're hearing them in their final year, and those things are completely strange. Mm. So you can't, you can't run and fly in a modern society, in the kind right. of world we live in today, right. with those kinds of people. We are not funding the universities where we don't, they don't have the right manpower. Those people who are intelligent lecturers, they are not you know, updating their knowledge. You, right. you know how these yeah. things work. We just keep saying, ah, he made a first class. Making a first class is not where he ends. Because the moment you make that first class and you leave the university, within two months, everything you were taught, you know, becomes, becomes obsolete. You need to keep improving yourself, keep attending conferences, keep going to places right. where these things right. are happening so that you can understand where the world is. All right, Dr. Ogudio, a, a, a fantastic opening. Let's go to another side of the moon um, <laughs> where we can speak with Opunabo in Kotaria and uh, think uh, beyond where we are with the country's university education, education system. Uh, Mr. Nkotari, are you there now? I've always been with you. <laughs> Excellent. Let's get your, let's get your, your reactions. Um, to the licensing of uh, universities, you've worked closely with the politicians in the past, and I'm sure that um, uh, it's intrigued are you, you also sure? too, uh, <laughs> whether or not you need more <laughs> universities, for example, <laughs> or not. Uh, Mr. Nkotari. Um, can you hear me? We hear you clearly. Okay. Yes. Um, the mushrooming of universities to me is staggering. And more disturbing is um, the licensing of those universities. It is obvious that most of these universities are established for pecuniary reasons, but not necessarily for scholarship. Because if you look at the university, if you go to the campuses, like my brother in the studio rightly said, they are more or less like glorified Sunday school, or some of them are not even as big and as well organized as my primary school, the proper primary school, which is the private primary school that was owned by the University of Ibadan. Most of them are not most of them are not even as big as that, or even well organized as that. And so you find out that just like churches these days, we are at uh, every nook and cranny you find the church. Now, every nook and cranny you find the university. Um, and this is also, the, what is also responsible for this is that people are hungry. You remember the issue of parity between um, the third degree and the HMD. Nobody, like my brother, and anyway, he said there was no need for everybody to attend the university. I agree with you, but that is in a civilized climate. In Nigeria here, you become inferior. You have a complex where you don't have a university degree. Imagine the battle between uh, the HND holders and the BSC holders. And recently, I think there's an act of National Assembly bill or National Assembly to ensure that the HND and the BSC are part. But the, that is the perception, which is a quite erroneous, because in civilized clients, you have people who attend technical colleges and uh, they come out and even fare better than those who attend university. But in this part of the world, if you are not a university graduate, you have this complex. You are considered inferior. Even in modern society, the first degree holders are seen as school start holders. You have a first degree, you are not seen as somebody who actually went to university. Uh, because you have a lot of young people with their master's and their doctorate degrees. And that is a that doctorate degree. Without a doc in another 10 years, without a doctorate degree, a lot of people will just dismiss you as a uh, habit. That's the truth about it. That's the serious something. So if you ask me, I will tell you, we don't need more universities. We need to strengthen the universities we have right now. We need to ensure that the universities we have right now meet international standards. Most of our graduates speak with them, even the lawyers, even the mass communicators, that as even those who graduated in English that are supposed to be partial in their speech, go and speak with them. I can remember somebody, a lawyer, I will not mention his name, who said to me, uh, yeah, oh, that the matter has been postponed there. And I turned and looked at him. This is somebody who went through the four walls of the university and also the law school. He said the matter has been postponed there. Another one said to me, oh, that this one is worse. And I was laughing. This, in fact, in the case of this one is worse, it was said in court, and the judge had to bow his head, and he could not, he was, he was ashamed of himself. What do you mean, ashamed of himself? He said, this one is worse. So what, what are we talking about? So the emphasis, people emphasize university education and de-emphasize quality of education. 
So that's the problem we have. So we minimize the maximum and maximize the minimum. Go to university, my son is a graduate. The problem is also with the parents who will do anything to ensure that their kids, their world graduate. Even if that world, even if it takes 100 million naira to ensure his ward or his son or his kid is not left in school for an extra year and he's rich, most of these politicians, they go ahead and pay that money. This uh, is a, a convoluted problem. It's a complex problem. So we don't have need to have more universities at all. All we need to do is strengthen the universities and ensure scholarship. Right now, most of these private universities are there are established for pecuniary gains to make more money, not necessarily for scholarship. For that opening remark, Upunabo, thank you. I think it's, it's, it's a question of, um, or a situation of garbage in, garbage out. If you hear your teacher say, wasa, then you end up saying, wasa, because that's what you've heard not over, my teacher. over and not again. My teacher. Not your I teacher. Said, I mean, lawyer, it's, lawyer, I mean, lawyer, it's the court. individual. So you can imagine. You can imagine. Absolutely. But that's, 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 not, that's, not, that's not an excuse. There's something called personal development. Your teacher says the wrong thing. I think it's up to the students to go to his or her dictionary and find out. Google is your best friend this well, day. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Right. So we, we, the lawyer in court. Yeah, that's 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 um, that's pretty um, not so nice to to hear. Um, we have in Abuja joining us uh, virtually Morenike St. Michael. She is an educationist and she also will be doing justice to this uh, particular issue. Good morning, Morenike, if you're here with us. Yes, I am. Absolutely um, great. Great. So I'm going to ask her more like a two in one question. Do you want your, your reaction to the call for a proliferation of higher education that universities uh, and also this issue of um, the Nigerian factor where it is the popular universities, graduates from popular universities that are usually considered more like you go to a place of work and they look at your CV or you're from this school. Okay. Oh, I'm a matter. That's fine. I can take this person, the person can, you know, can, can work. Then if you're from a school that is not well known, they begin to ask questions. Where is the school? Where is it from? You know, yeah. that Nigerian factor. So I want your reactions to uh, these two issues. Well, I, I'll start from the last one. Uh, unfortunately, I may say that I'm also guilty of that because I recruit and um, it sort of makes your job easier when you are recruiting, when you are identifying some universities. Something just ticks. Okay, this, 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 this should be a sound graduate. You know, I mean, erroneously, if you like, but it is what it is because you've seen so many graduates of the um, public universities who, as uh, Mr. Ikotaria said, who can't even speak good English, you know? So because you have been used to that, um, there are some universities, private universities for the greater part, who you feel um, their graduates are probably going to be, be better. But well, that's not always the case. Um, but going back to, you know, setting up more universities, I don't think that that's, again, I have to agree with, with the speakers who spoke earlier, we need to strengthen the existing universities. Um, but the problem isn't from the universities. For instance, the person saying um, Worcester or Worcester is it did not pick that up from the university. If you if you haven't started speaking good English, really, by the time you leave secondary school, chances are that you're never going to be speaking good English unless you take conscious effort to learn how to speak. And it's the same thing with every other skill that you get from organized schooling, I mean, formal education. If you don't have the basic skills earlier than going into the university, the university isn't going to do much for you, you know, except in core competencies that we're not even competent with, you know. So I think that um, to solve that problem, we need to go to the basics. We need to strengthen the primary schools and the secondary schools. You see, in the secondary school, um, that's where you know whether you should go to the university or not, really. That's why abroad you find children who are not, I won't be going into college. And it's okay, you will make a living. 
you know, so it's in the university, you know, that, oh, I want to be a makeup artist. I mean, in the, in, at the end of secondary school, you should know, oh, I want to be a makeup artist. You shouldn't graduate, as we see now, you shouldn't graduate in, in, in engineering only to go back and, and become a makeup artist. You know, so we should, we should strengthen the primary and the secondary schools. When the work there is properly done, then going to the university or not would be necessary for only people who need to go to the university. Because again, I agree that not everyone um, is cut out to attend the university or attending university does not um, guarantee success in life. You know, so we, 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 we also need to synthesize parents and the society at large. Um, you know, and let people know, you know, um, when, you, when we do well, when the government um, concentrates on educating <coughs> children before the university, then you won't need to establish all universities that are not doing well in the first place. You know, then we strengthen the existing universities so that the graduates of these universities are actually graduates, you know, that you can beat your chest for. And, 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 and you know, and I think that in that case, we would be fine, you know, but I, perhaps it's also because my, my strength is below the university. I, that's where I see the, the incompetences, you know, that follow them to the university. So I think that we should strengthen the earlier um, education structure before we move on to the university. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Morenike. Uh, Dr. Ogudoro, there's, there's, some, there's certain things, um, you know, they've talked about. You mentioned also the existing gap. I look at the National Universities Commission. People have argued of what relevance it serves in today's Nigeria. Uh, maybe the founding, uh, maybe the military era had designs. I mean, I look at the sort of goals, I'm looking at the website short while ago, talking about um, creating a crisis-free environment for university systems, innovation, and a lot, a lot of um, theory. But in practice, I think about many of the things that happen with, within the university system. You have you've had universities set up for a certain goal, University of Technology, to improve Nigeria's technological system over time. Uh, the jury is out whether those universities of technology have done exactly what they were set out to do while they were created in the 80s. Uh, now you have aerospace university. There's even a university now for traffic management. The road safety is, you know, collaborating with one of the universities, I think, uh, so that even all these last mile boys and girls can know how to do the work in a scientific way. <laughs> not jumping to people's work. I mean, you're laughing because traffic management is actually a course, not what we see on the roads. But help us understand this huge gap between knowledge, information, and knowing what sort of career you should be pursuing it's such a huge problem. I'm not too sure whether you think the NUC is cut out uh, to provide direction in this path. Well, well NUC is, is the government agency that is supposed to provide policy direction. Good. And help the, people, the leadership of the individual universities to understand what they should be focusing on. Good. And uh, so their mandate is to ensure that the higher education, the university system runs uh, in a way that provides us the human capacity to be able to drive development at the pace we want it as a country. Good. Unfortunately, that is not happening, and you can understand why. Politicians interfere a lot in the jobs that they do. In other climes, such establishments, even when they are funded from public treasury, mm. You don't find politicians meddling into the job they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Even how you know, they recruit the people who run them, especially at leadership level. People compete for those kinds of jobs. But that's not what you find here. You know, whether it's JAM or National Universities Commission or uh, uh, National Board for Technical Education or those kinds of places. You know, politicians who, like president at the federal level, governor at the state level, they impose you know, they are fellow politicians on these places. Mm. And in the case of universities, they get some professors who are loyal to them, who will be sending them returns, who are not experts on higher education management. There's one level of, you know, one, a, a knowledge gap when it comes to education in Nigeria that most people don't seem to be very conscious of. 
that you are a professor of geology doesn't make you an educationist. Education is a field of learning. Mm. So there are people who go to university to study education. You get a bachelor's in it, you go and do a master's in it, you probably go and get a, a PhD in it. People like us, that's the route we have gone, gone through. And so in the universities, you find us in, in faculties of education. So we are the experts when it comes to understanding what we should put in place to make the system to work. So if you are a professor of medicine, you understand medicine. Okay, so in, in proper countries like in England, if you want to teach well, even when you're a professor of medicine, they send you back to school to go and learn how to teach. And the people who will teach you how to teach are educationists who, from the beginning, have devoted their life to understanding the science of, of education management. That's not what you find in Nigeria. Go to JAM, the man who just, you know, left office as JAM registrar. That, that man has a PhD in Islamic studies. Why should somebody who has a PhD in Islamic studies be running a career management institution like, like JAM? And people were clapping hands. So you were just gathering money and giving to federal government, we were all clapping hands. And the young people were not getting access that the place was set up for. Go to knock, go and check the background of the people who run the place. They are professors in fields that are unconnected with education. They, all the directors are people who are doing things that are unconnected with education. But because they have godfathers, at the political level, they allow them to come around these places, and that's why you have the kind of problems, problems that you have in your hands. So until we are able to understand what education should be doing for us, and recognize that there are experts in the different fields of education who can help us with curriculum development, mm. you know, get the right people in place in those places, career management, guidance and counseling, education foundation, mm. okay? Pedagogy, learning how to teach properly. Currently, the average Nigerian teacher the only thing he talks about is lesson plan, lesson note. <laughs> in proper countries, in places where education is delivering its goods, what it promises the people to society, nobody uses lesson note to teach. Nobody uses lesson plan to teach because lesson plan is institution driven. It's, it's institution you know, oriented kind of methodology mm. for teaching. It's mm. not student centered, it's not learner centered, it's teacher centered. And the education system is, was not created to cater for the teacher. Only to the extent that you pay him good salary and train him and give him the equipment with which to work. Mm. But the system was created to train young people to acquire knowledge, skills, and the right values to be able to play their roles as adults when they mature and get into a larger society. But today, what do we do? We give them lessons, no, we give them iPads, even the states they think that think they are doing well. They load knowledge on iPad and say, teacher, teach these children this all the time. You can't do that in a modern society because by the time you finish loading those things on the iPad, everything you have put there has, has, has expired. You need teachers who are on, on their feet, learning on a daily basis, and who are interacting with the right skills, with the children in the classroom, who are recognized as co-creators of knowledge. The current system we have in place is a system that says only the teacher can create knowledge, and then impose it on the, on the learner, who a lot of times is better informed than the teacher. That's what we find today. Many teachers here not, don't even know how to use, you know, smartphones. These children we have now are children who the curriculum that is supposed to take five years, they can finish it in six months. My children, are tell, at some point, I had to take them out of the, out the regular education system. I finished the job at home. I served them one year because this whole idea of spending, keeping children in school for six years, why, why do we need that in a modern society? Mm. I served my children one year and they finished, wrote international exams, you know, finished at the mm. top 1% of candidates in the world. They mm. competed with Americans and Europeans and, and finished. After I had served them one year, one of them is already in the US. He, he, he got full scholarship because he, he missed my, he, They couldn't believe an African child could operate at that level. Okay? And I have, so the world we, we live in is a world where we don't even need the four years anymore. In the next 10 years, you wouldn't need four years to finish a university degree. In six months, you can finish it. Hmm. Nigeria is not preparing for that era. We, I, sometimes I even hear people who are campaigning for us to increase the number of years, thinking that that is how to improve the quality of education. Improve the quality of teaching, methodology, Provide a technology, and the things that take people four years to learn, you can teach all of that in two months. I'm doing that currently. Right. In public relations, for example, the curriculum they have been using in this country, which takes about four years to, you know, to deliver. I deliver it in only two weeks, and my products do much, much better than the people who spend four years trying to learn public relations in universities. And this is some, that is where the world is, okay? Oh. All the resources are there. Why are we getting children to cram things that internet can, internet can teach them? Why are we putting it in lesson notes and lesson plan? There are a lot of things you don't need to teach people anymore. 
we could talk about flipped classrooms, okay? So you give children, you know, a template that every child must know on day one what the syllabus says. Go and ask the average Nigerian child if he has the syllabus for Wayek that he's going to write. The average Nigerian child doesn't have it. Go and ask them for, for JAM, UTM, he doesn't have it. The teachers hold everything in secret. All right, Dr. Ogundo. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, <laughs> if, if we leave you, um, <laughs> oh, if we leave you, and no wonder, no wonder when you secret. talk to some people, they, they, you, you say they get mesmerized and they keep saying, wow, like you're coming from the moon. I mean, an average teacher, you tell oh, the boy. teacher that what you teach the child in six years, the child can learn in two or three years, the child will say, that's not actually not true. But, but that, 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 that calls for a lot of improvement in a, a wholesome improvement in all our education system. Uh, let, let, let me speak with um, Opunabo in Kotaria. Um, we've seen the challenges and we know we need a solution. So I, I, I would like to ask, should it be a top bottom approach or the other way around? Should it be the students calling for, you know, um, putting pressure on their teachers who in turn put pressure on those at the top? Or should it be, you know, children trickle down from the top down to the students? Which approach do you think will, would, would work? The inverted pyramid approach. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please break that down for us. Let's understand that. Well, top bottom, not bottom from top. Well, like from the lecturers, the institution, the government to the students. Because uh, the students are going to be hankering. They'll be in a hurry to get out of the system. Most of them don't need the university degrees to progress in life. And in most cases, um, their parents probably are so wealthy that they'll shut up businesses for them or let them get into politics. And that's why you find all kinds of characters in our national assemblies, in our houses of assemblies, and in our uh, state executive uh, uh, members, like commissioners and special advisors. If you listen to what they say at ESCO meetings, you're weak, and you begin to wonder if they actually saw the four walls of university. Even if you listen to our National Assembly members, I don't want to talk about the State House of Assembly because um, those ones, I'm, I'm very sorry to say, even you have uh, talks in there that are just being rewarded for their mediocrity and their loyalty. So most House of Assemblies are populated by talks, ex-convicts and what have you, criminals. The National Assembly, most of them, or passengers alluded to that fact. Uh, even the former DIG was a senator alluded to that fact. And when it was challenged, he said we're going to get the files out, and they all did it. And that was how the matter was swept under the carpet. So you have all kinds of characters. Well, let me quickly address uh, some of the issues that Dr. Reed and uh, St. Michael raised. Uh, St. Michael, please, I'll get to your address because I'll run to you for blessing so that I can go to heaven in a sick. Uh, please, that's on the light on <laughs> so, first, <laughs> so first and foremost, um, uh, the issue of the foundation, I agree with you the primary school, the secondary school, but the university should hold your skills. We shouldn't take that away. We don't expect a lawyer to say, what's sir? There is no excuse whatsoever. Even if he went to the worst primary school, water side primary school, you know, there's a hard day pass it like that. So that's where the university comes in. Then on the, what doctor said, I agree, yes, you must have a degree in education to lecture, no doubt about that. But then, don't forget that before now, a lot of people look down on the education degree. If you tell your parents you're going or your friends you're going in for BA, they laugh at you. They, they believe that you have to go to a no. BSc or okay, you have to go to a BSc, you have to go not to a BA. They just laugh. Is that it? You're being circumscribed. You're being, you're you're, you're, you're narrowly the back. And most in those days, the BS were awarded by colleges of education. This is an erroneous belief, and that is where the, the federal government comes in. That's where the NOA comes in. The issue of the appointment of uh, somebody who read Sharia, or whatever how they call it, as a um, jam boss. My dear, it is political. And that is where I say it is from the top to the bottom. We must get these things right. These appointments are not based on merit. These appointments are based on nepotism. These appointments are based on fidelity not to the system, but to an individual. So that's where we are getting everything wrong. And this is because even though the appointees, those who are appointed, don't forget it started from the military area. And how many military leaders were even at, at, at graduate? None of them. So the, the readings appreciate it. 
the universities are set up just to placate certain regions and certain states. They are not set up to achieve scholarships. Set up because uh, Lagos has two universities, River State must have four universities, Delta should have four universities. That, that, that's the whole idea about the establishment of this university. They are not interested in the quality of the students, in the quality of the graduates. That's the problem, that's the thing. So it must come from the top. We must have, I mean, I'm very sorry to say, how can you have a country that will say the minimum qualification for you to be a president is a school sir? Right now, it's even controversial. They attempted school sir. My dear, there is no but attempted school sir that will appreciate and understand what a university is, how a university is supposed to be run. You cannot be quick what you don't have. And you say attempted school sir. Those days, not today. Look at, go to America. You have other graduates as president. Then here you come and you say, attempted school, sir. What are we talking about? So it has to be from top to bottom. And the student, and, and we've, we've already produced characters that tomorrow <laughs> will eventually become heads of state. They have the first degree. That's another problem that we're, we're oblivious of. They have the first degree. But how did they get that first degree? I know of students who came to me to say, please, if I have 200,000 naira, I shall graduate. And I said, how? The lecturer wants 200,000. Some lecturers, their parents give them a, a contract to ensure that they are worth for students. First, so how do you, what do you expect from such characters? And these are the persons that are going to be escorted in public in, uh, offices. And you cannot decrease what you do not have. So it's a convoluted system. It's a problem. And on that, okay, look at the, the uh, uh, budget allocation for uh, uh, education. It's so meager. And this is because the man at the top does not appreciate what a university or what education is all about. Let's call it space space. If you don't appreciate what education is all about, you will be reluctant to spend more on education. And that is the problem we have. Why will lecturers be going on strike every day? Why? These are things that you can address. Now, where billions of dollars have been embezzled every day, but yet to pay lecturers their salaries, their uh, uh, entitlements, and the you find it difficult. Why? That's the problem we have. That's the system. So it's from top to bottom. The students, their issues can be addressed. Because if you have it, and most people go into teaching, not because they love the teaching, not for passion, but for lack of job. All right, thank you very so much. It's, it's, it's a complex situation. All right. Thank you very much, Apunabo and Kotara. It's been great speaking with you. And um, never enough time to talk about education and what we need to do. We're going to keep this discussion rolling until perhaps see light, a beam of light at the end of this tunnel. Apunabo uh, and Kotara, public affairs analyst. Is that horror, sure? My brother, how are you sure? <laughs> we will eventually, I hope. We'll, we'll, side, we'll, we'll side with the, with the, with the <laughs> side of good. All right, let's speak with uh, Maureen Eke St. Michael. Uh, let's get your closing remarks on this one with the university system. Well, I, I, I honestly, there is no gain saying, um, again, the fact that uh, I jokingly say that we, we, we've allocated this little time to analyzing this also shows um, the, the the bigger picture of how important education is but really um we just we we can't develop more than the education that we give to the next generation it's as simple as that no matter how much we want to excel as a nation no matter how um advanced we want to become we cannot be better than the education system we put in place so um uh, i would say that all of these our new universities isn't what we need. We need better educated um, generation, you know, and education is not until you attend the university. We, we, the people who go to the university, the people who deserve to be in the university, so that when they come out, they can be true graduates, you know, and let's, let's prioritize education. That's it. That's the only way this nation can be better education must be given priority that it deserves. Thank you. Well, Maureen Kess and Mike, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Education is always 
a pleasure. We can touch bases with you. And then finally, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, your closing remarks. I'm sure that uh, many things running through your mind, but <laughs> you'd want to leave us with something. Uh, I hope that one of those days when they have all those Senate screenings for the Minister of Education especially, they will take Dr. Peter Ogudoro to help us drill this minister. I think it's unthinkable that we have ministers. I think they try to revise that thing when you have a minister, ministerial screening and they don't give them the portfolios. At least for education, we must know who is the minister of education. We don't have to wait until, like you say, they close as a secret. Yeah. And then we'll then find out that, lo and behold, this is the minister of education. And we ask the most important questions on what we need to do. What's your closing remarks, sir? Yeah, we, we must uh, put it on record that um, higher education is a critical uh, level of education in any country. South Korea today um, is giving us Kia Motors, has given us Samsung, has given us LG and several others. How were they able to get there? They got there by ensuring that the rate at which young people were transitioning from high school to university was mm -hmm. very high. So mm -hmm. out of every nine, out of every hundred young people who finish secondary, who finish secondary school in South Korea, mm -hmm. about 99 of them end up in university. Mm -hmm. Okay, so access is very critical. But what they are giving there is not just access, mm -hmm. it's quality access. Mm -hmm. Here we're not giving adequate access and we are not giving quality access to the few who manage to get in there. Mm -hmm. Now we are compounding our problem by giving charlatans licenses to run universities who think that universities are regular businesses and so they don't understand what they are doing there. And they are not getting students because given our per capita income as a country, the average parent can't afford to send children to those kinds of places. So we need to. And again, we have enough spaces at the moment. That's the evidence I have. This is my area of, 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 of research interest and where I have done work that has been globally recognized and respected. Go and go to British Library and you look, look, look up my thesis. You get all the answers. If we do the right things, it, it won't take us more than five years. Nigeria will become a net exporter of educational services and will be saving minimum of two trillion naira. I do not know why we still continue to send our people abroad. It's just because you know the politicians are, are not are not ready to play the ball. So we can get to try it if we if we invest in, in, in manpower development, if we provide the right technology, and not just providing more money, but ensuring that we be, we put in place systems that will right. ensure that the money we allocate to education is delivering the results for which we're make, making that allocation. And as Morenike rightly pointed out, we also need to remember that if we don't work hard at primary and secondary school levels, the wrong people will be getting into higher education and won't be getting a good product. As they say in computer, it becomes garbage in, garbage out. So we can try, and some of the people who are interested, you know, if you call me, I'll be willing to serve this country any day, any time, and for free. Because by the grace of God, you know, one has got to a level globally where I don't need Nigeria's money to feed. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, um, that's the spirit. That's the patriotic spirit that we're talking about. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Peter Oguduro, an educationist. Uh, I'm yet to look for an adjective to put in front of the educationist. <laughs> Firebrand <laughs> educationist uh, for doing justice to this particular um, topic. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anyway, based on popular demand, we will be bringing back this particular subject matter, right. um, talking about proliferation of universities, is that the right way to go? Or ensuring that the universities we have are improved upon so we can churn out better graduates to meet up with the global uh, competences. And I do hope, um, we do hope we can have every one of the fantastic guests that we had today back on set. Do we have your yes? You can be very sure. Uh, if we have, um, <laughs> if we still have our guests online, we definitely would love to get their yeses uh, before we end the show. Uh, do, are, we, are we going to have you back? Uh, uh, okay, okay, they are not, they are not available right now, but we'll, we'll definitely get this uh, particular uh, topic uh, again here in News Up. And thank you so much for saying yes again, Dr. Peter. My pleasure. All right, when we come back, we'll be taking a trip from the uh, world of education into security, and this time around is flat to state. We're having someone who will be coming to give us what is happening there and the way forward to broker peace in the community. This is News Up. Stay with us.